we ready? Turn that shit up. You have now entered Staying On Point, powered by Digital Sucker Punch. Discussing all things business, fitness, and marketing. And we are back from a long hiatus, and welcome back to the Staying On Point podcast. Today's guest, we've got Eric Herrera, who is a... Uh, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. He is a, uh, a founder of Combat Subs and has a phenomenal story. Uh, the reason why we wanted to get him on today was, uh, you know, to hear his story. And um, I believe he is someone that's going to inspire a lot of you because, you know, frankly, because of his story, but also he is doing what a lot of you are wanting to do or are currently doing and, you know, really bringing his own brand and his own product to market in a space that is uh, quite exciting. Uh, Eric, thank you for coming on today. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for uh, having me, David. And I know that you're up early because obviously you're in Australia. I'm here in the States. And because I'm your guest, you're nice enough to do it at a reasonable time for me, even though it may not be reasonable for you. No, nah, you know, early bird gets the worm, as they say. I'm, I'm caffeinated or halfway there. So, you know, we'll make this work. Awesome. Perfect. Hey, listen, to get things off, you know, tell me, what are you up to? And actually, before we even get to what are you up to, please give us a background story on you. How did you get to where you are right now? What was the motivation? What was the inspiration? Uh, not only for your, your personal fitness journey, your health journey, but also what inspired you to start Combat Subs? Yeah, so it's a long story. So it's going to twist and turn, but I, problem, I promise there is a point at it towards <laughs> the end. So Kind of going back to, uh, you know, little Eric, or as I was a kid growing up, I was always involved in sports. So I played football, baseball, basketball as a little kid. Then I played football and baseball in high school. I played baseball in college. Um, so always in shape, always doing things. And then after I graduated, the first year, I was so tired of having to work out basically all day, every day. that I was like, all right, screw it. I'm not going to do anything. And then I started getting fat. And so I was like, all right, now I have to start getting back into shape, doing that kind of thing. So then let's call it for the next, I don't know, six, seven, eight years, something like that, continue to stay in shape, work out, those kinds of things. Uh, and then I met my wife, which was awesome. But because I was happy, I started working out a little bit less. And then I had a daughter, right? So then I came up with the excuses of, well, you know, now I'm married. I'm, I have a kid. I have a, like a real job. So, you know, if I don't work out, whatever, I'll be okay. Mm. Um, and, you know, that probably continued for, I don't know, three or four years, something like that. And uh, towards the end, I'm not a very big guy. So I'm only five, nine. I don't know what that translates to in meters, but it's not very many meters. And um, we do, we do. So feet, at that, there we go. Yeah. So, you know, in that, you know, at, at that height, I was at the worst, I was 210 pounds, which as you look at, you know, body mass, body fat, you know, the ratios were definitely out of whack there. That was not, uh, you know, ideal for, for much. Mm -hmm. And because I have a high stress job and I was doing some other kinds of investments, uh, I was definitely on my way to being that guy that was going to die at his desk of a heart attack at 45, 50 years old. Right. Cause I'm working 16 hours a day not taking care of myself, eating like shit, all of the things you're not supposed to do. Hmm. So, you know, as my daughter, you know, turned three or a little bit after she turned three, my daughter was like, Hey, or my wife was like, Hey, there's this jujitsu place across the street. And our daughter is super active. And so she was like, I think I want to take her to that so she can learn how to defend herself. Um, you know, learn, you know, at least maybe try to calm down a little bit, learn a little bit of self-discipline. I was like, yeah, for sure. I, I want her to kick ass. So go for it. Hmm. Uh, so she did jujitsu for a couple of months and they do parents and kids classes. So then I started doing the parents and kids class and that kind of got my competitive juices flowing again. <laughs> uh, but the problem was I was, I was so overweight that I was like literally winded when I was doing the warm up. but sucked it up, went through. And finally, I just kind of made the decision. I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, uh, start training jujitsu. So Went, signed up, went to my first class. Uh, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack about halfway through. And I don't know if I was wearing, you know, some sort of measurement tool, like a whoop or something like that, it probably would have said that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But continued to train, really fell in love with the sport. And, you know, part of it is just stress relief because honestly, choking people is a really good stress reliever. Uh, but <laughs> part of it too, right, is it's just, you feel so much better. And I, 
started to get into shape. And then I, because I'm so pet competitive, I started to compete. Um, and so if you want to compete, you need to get to even better shape. And sometimes just training on the mats isn't enough. So then I started doing different kinds of workouts and CrossFit and those kinds of things. So then I was actually in really good shape. And as I started looking to things like, okay, how do I adjust my diet? What are the right kind of supplements I should be using, you know, on the mats for combat sports athletes? As I looked around at the marketplace, I didn't see very much, right? There, there were really, there wasn't anything specifically designed for jujitsu or MMA, MMA or Muay Thai or those kinds of things. And part of the problem that I found with traditional kind of pre-workouts that are awesome, you know, when you're, you're banging iron, right. That are in the gym is it gets you really jacked up, um, which is helpful for that. But when you're on the mats, that doesn't help you at all. That's actually the opposite of what you want. Yeah. yeah. Right. You want to stay calm, focused. You want to kind of think two moves ahead. And so I, I started kind of playing with supplements and honestly, I just, I bought a bunch of stuff and then started doing some testing (laughs) on my own. (laughs) <laughs> right. And to see, all right. So these are kind of the common formulas. Let me try some of these and then we'll make some tweaks from there. Uh, I'll be honest. There were a couple of times I definitely got it wrong in my testing. Okay. And as I started training, I was like, wow, yeah, that didn't work at all. So then uh, kind of because of my, of my other job, I was actually introduced to a guy that uh, runs a uh, supplement manufacturing company. So I talked to him, he hooked me up with his team we then do it, started doing some real tests uh, to figure out, okay, what is really going to work? On other people? And <laughs> what's that? On other people? Tests on other people this time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did, yeah. So I, I still, I'm still our lead guinea pig, so I okay. still test everything first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, once I'm like, okay, I, th- think we're, I think we're in the neighborhood, then yeah, some of the guys at my gym will help me test as well. Yeah. So did all of that. And then after about 14 months of testing, uh, finally, you know, came to the formula that I, I started with now. So this is, it's called before. Phenomenal, phenomenal. And, um, from that, you know, and I'm going to wind it back because I'm going to, I'm going to poke holes in a good way. A, a lot of things that you just said there, but from that period of time where you first took your daughter to BJJ to where you are now, what, how, what time frame are we talking there? Uh, about four and a half years. Okay. Fantastic. And how long did it take before you, decided that, all right, you know, I'm going to start doing this seriously. I'm going to compete. You know, I'm going to, this is not just me rolling around having fun with my daughter. This is something that I'm going to pursue um, competitively. Uh, So in jujitsu, we have a belt system kind of similar to other martial arts, right? But on those belts, there are, there are also stair steps. And when you're a white belt, which is kind of like entry level, you get a stripe every month, basically, right? Depending on your skill. Uh, I signed up for my first, you're not allowed to compete until you have three stripes. I signed up for my first competition before I got my third stripe. Uh, cause I was just like, yes, I'm going to do this. Forced yourself, forced yourself. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. And, um, and then obviously with the introduction of the supplements, uh, you know, you saw what was out there on the market. You tested a lot of products that are out in the market. They weren't really applicable to, combat sports specifically you know bjj and myself i've never done any sort of brazilian jiu-jitsu i've done a lot of striking sports uh, you know i've rolled around on the floor with my friends and i know how easy it is to gas yourself out um i could yeah. only imagine if you're actually trying to either put yourself in a position to defend yourself or be in a, you know a combative position that it's a whole nother ball game so um, you know, and I train weights pretty, pretty heavily. And I know those high stim subs can gas you out quick. So if you're rolling around the floor, um, you know, that's certainly an, a no go. So what yeah, you, for yeah. sure. And also, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what kind of cardio you do. We have guys that do CrossFit. We have guys that run marathons yep. and the first couple of times they do jujitsu, they're still gas because you're using your whole body and another grown man is trying to strangle you unconscious. Yes. So you're, you're tensed up and you're, you use everything almost immediately. Yeah. And, and you know, like there's a notion or well, no, it's not a notion. It's actually science. It's called this, the principle of specificity. You know, when you train for something you train to do specifically, you know, on that, on a, on a side note, is there, besides actually doing it, is there sort of external training that you can do to prepare yourself for, for essentially having a grown man, trying to choke you out on the mat 
Uh, yeah. So there are some sport specific movements, you know, that you can do in the weight room, but they're also just, you know, general strength things. So some of the sport specific ones, well, all it sounds weird, but, uh, sandbag training is actually really helpful. Sure. So, right. It, Cause essentially you get a sandbag that's roughly the same size of you. And that's the same dead weight. If I need to pick a man up and throw him over my shoulder, mm-hmm. just like a sandbag. Um, you know, things like Turkish get-ups, because that's a common position that we're in where we're trying to push somebody off us, but we're still also trying to stand up off the mat. Those kinds of, those kinds of things really help. Yeah. yeah fantastic. And, um, from, from now, how many competitions have you had? How does that look like? What's the, what's the roadmap for you in terms of, um, continue competing or is this more of now a gateway to, to be able to promote and, bring your product to a market that is underserved? How does that look like for you? Uh, so kind of to answer the last question, yes, I'm still going to compete just because I love it. Yep. Um, you know, so competitions kind of vary. So there are some that are more tournament style mm. where it's, you know, five, 10, 15 people in your bracket and you kind of compete against each other to see who's going to win uh, through each round. They're all single elimination. Yep. Um, and then there are others which are, they're called super fun. Fights. Think of it as you know, one five or six or ten minute fight between you and another guy. Uh, and I actually I had my first professional fight back in August, somewhere in there. I wasn't aware that you've done pro fights. Fantastic! Congratulations. Yeah, it's a big feat. Yeah, it was. So I, it wasn't the smartest thing to do. So I actually <laughs> did a super. So I did a super fight the week before. And at that super fight, I tore my meniscus. Uh, And then on Thursday, another guy dropped out. And so they called me and said, hey, do you want to fight? And I was like, what the hell? Let's go for it. Uh, So I basically had Friday and Saturday morning to get ready. And then I I fought uh, Saturday night. Wow. And how did that occur? Was that just the shearing force on the knee joint? Someone landing on it, wrong position? Or someone? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So I, I ended up tearing both. So oh, shit. yeah. So <laughs> the first one, yeah, I, somebody basically, there was a guy laying on the ground. Um, he had a foot lock on me, but I was standing. So if you kind of think of like this as his kind of shoulder and arm, hmm. my foot was in here. He had it trapped, but a way that you get out of that is you essentially drop your shin on their throat yep, and yep, you just yep. kind of slide through. Yep, yep, uh, yep, but yep. he had a tighter grip than I thought. And it went, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and we could all hear it when it did that. So that was the tear, the first one. No, then no. you know, being what's that? No, go ahead, please. So then, being the smart guy that I am, I like I said, I kept competing. I had two more fights, and then I kept training. I was just doing it a little bit more lightly, mm. but naturally, you kind of you overcorrect, right? So I was putting mm. way more pressure, way more weight on the other knee, and I was doing a judo throw in practice. And I, because there was so much force on the knee, I actually bruised the bone and I tore the other meniscus. Shit. Now, is this uh, requiring any surgery at all? I know um, I'm quite familiar with meniscus injuries and, you know, it's keyhole surgery. They get in there and they just sort of shave a little bit off just to get rid of the loose bodies. And it reduces the sort of that shearing noise that you can quite often get now that uh, if there's a meniscus tear going on in there. That's yeah. A- so yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different kinds of meniscus tears. I didn't know this until I wanted yeah. to go see the doc, um, but I had two different kinds. Yeah. Yep. Right. So I had two different kinds. One was more frayed. One was more torn. Hmm. Um, but in both cases, I was able to do PRP, which right. is basically they draw your blood, they spit it in a centrifuge and they suck out the platelets. Yep. And then they just inject those platelets back into like the the point where the trauma is yep. and it healed really quickly. So I didn't want to just sit around and do nothing. And my doctor knew that he does jujitsu too. Uh, <laughs> so like, that's part of why I went to him, right? Like as I was describing, he said, Hey, how'd you tear it? When I described it, he knew what the hell I was talking about. Unreal. Unreal. So uh, he was like, all right, just start with like air squats, those kinds of things. He's like nothing under load. Don't go below parallel. So I did that. And then on my stationary bike, I would just do 25 ish miles every day. Yep. And within three, three weeks, I was back to probably 60%. Yep. So then he's like, all right, now you can start going below parallel. Um, still not very heavy weights, but you know, like a weighted vest or something, you can do yep. it. 
And then within, I don't know, a month and a half, two months, I, I was probably 90 plus percent good to go. And then that was four months ago. And I've been full sparring, you know, deep squats, going below parallel, all of that stuff for a while now. Yeah, right. So I, would, I would highly recommend PRP if it if it's applicable for your energy, for sure. Yeah, sure, sure. And that's essentially just putting blood flow back into that area to let the body regenerate itself um, uh, by the sounds of it. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah they, they, like I said, they suck out uh, like just the platelets after it's all separated. Sure. Um, but yeah, and that speeds up the healing process. Yeah. Wow. What a journey. What a journey. So, hey, listen, I'm going to dive into about come combat subs you know this is the forte we've worked together you know on this product we've assisted you in uh, certain areas of uh, the marketing and so on and so forth so I'm, I'm really curious and i know people listening uh you know probably for more of the the business e-commerce fitness side of things as well as you know you know hearing about your exposés on the mat but um right now with the formulation that you've got you know what's the feedback have you gotten from the people that have used the product who have you got um, outside of your general community as well? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get, you know, a lot more people just kind of reaching out randomly on Instagram. You hmm. know, sometimes they'll put it in their story. Sometimes they'll just DM me and say, hey, your stuff is awesome. It really helps me get through, hmm. uh, you know, kind of get through training. Uh, you know, lots of folks really like the fact that it doesn't get you really jittery. It's, it's more of kind of like a steady climb. Sure. Right. Is kind of the way that the energy is delivered. Yep. And because it's that steady climb, you also don't get that dramatic crash either. It's kind of even up, even down, um, which is really helpful. And so all of the feedback has been around, it's, it's either around the, okay, the way that the energy is released, but also because we have some nootropics in there, they like the fact that they are more focused and you're able to pay attention. So a lot of the moves that we do are kind of complicated. It's grab here, move this here, kick your leg around this way, spin upside down. And there's a lot of steps. And half the time when you're sitting in class, you're like, what the hell did he just say? <laughs> uh, but, but honestly, people are noticing like, like they're picking up on things more. And then another common thing that happens is you go through class and we practice all of these things. And then as soon as we go into sparring, which is, you know, 90 ish percent speed, basically of a full fight, um, everything you just learned goes out the window, sure. right? And you, you kind safe. of go back, same thing in striking, right? And, you know, it, you, so you kind of go back to your tried and true, but a lot of the feedback we're getting is I'm actually remembering what the hell I just learned and I'm able to do it again, because it's, it's going in there. I'm registering information a little bit differently and able to focus a little bit more. And because I'm not all amped up, then I'm able to recall and then correctly put my hands or my feet in the right place. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal. And what I love about this product and I love about the brand is that we quite often see supplements out there. You know, the, the market, the industry is, you know, it's highly saturated, highly skeptical industry because I suppose every man and their dog to some degree, you know, I shouldn't say every man and their dog, but I can say the barrier to entry to get into the industry now is a lot lower. So you can see a lot of drop shipping brands where you've got manufacturers that sort of mass produce the same product, but people are relabeling it and sort of trying to serve the same general health and fitness market. But what I love about your product is that it's very specific. It's very niche. It's service, not even servicing combat sports as a, as a whole, though it is, but it's very niche down to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and it serves that particular market. And not only that, it, 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 you know, it's, it serves the market in a way that really understands what their needs are. So, you know, you could have quite easily re released a high stim pre-workout that would have got people amped up and, you know, aggressive aggression on the mat and so on and so forth. But as you've already pointed out, they would have gassed out in the first 20 minutes. This keeps them going through that session. It keeps that information retained that the instructor's presenting to them and, you know, allows them to, you know, hopefully recall when, you um, when they're there getting dirty down and dirty for the, for the spa. So, you know, this yeah, is really intriguing. To yeah, me. for sure. And that was definitely intentional. So like I said, as I started just kind of looking in supplements for myself and I found that there was nothing in combat sports, I'm like, all right, I identified a, a hole in the marketplace. Right. And then I, you know, everybody's kind of heard the phrase, the, the riches are in the niches. Mm. And so I really leaned into that. It's okay. I I'm learning more about this and I understand the combat sports space. So I'm going to focus on what I really know, 
Now, long-term, big picture, part of the reason that the name is Combat Subs is in my mind, I do see this logo behind me here in the center of the octagon one day, nice. right? Because we're going to start to expand and we'll move into other combat sports. Mm -hmm. I, I know some guys that do MMA and they've tested it and their feedback is basically the same as the jujitsu guys is it works. It makes sense. Um, but and I want to really hone in on getting the messaging right and understanding my audience in jujitsu first. Sure. Um, once I, that's totally dialed, then I'll expand into other markets. And the same kind of goes for the product line. You mentioned, yeah, you can get kind of a the the standard formula and just slap you know Bill's brand on it or whatever. Yep. I wanted to do everything custom, and so that takes a long ass time to get it right. Hell yeah. <laughs> I've been, yeah. So this, I released it about a year ago. I've been testing various forms of, you know, various recovery formulas for about a year. And we're going to come out with that soon, but it's the same kind of process. I want something that's specific for us. And I know before I'm going to deliver anything, it absolutely works in this space. So then I can speak to the audience that I want. Yeah, perfect. And that's exactly what needs to be done. You know, and that's a good saying. I, I've heard of that before, but I haven't used it in a long time. The riches are in the niches. You know, that's really good. So tell me, in the whole process of developing, let's put the developing of the product aside, but in the process of actually bringing it to market, the marketing, the tech stack, advertising, the positioning of the brand, what is one sort of pain point that you've really come across? And, you know, how did you overcome that? Yeah. So honestly, I think the biggest pain point was finding the right voice for the brand. So in my head, I, I understood the avatar that I was going after. Hmm. Right. So it's guys that are, you know, 25 to 50 ish that do jujitsu, have some disposable income. And there are some other factors in there as well that are built into the avatar, but that's basically it. Sure. And so I, part of where I messed up is when I would write copy or when I would, you know, either whether it's on advertising or on my own site, I wasn't thinking, how do I say, right? How do I get into his head? What are his needs? Mm. I did it in the formulation. I kind of did it in, in some of the, uh, you know, in the logo, the label, that kind of stuff. But then I forgot it essentially. Yep. And it took me a while to figure out, okay, exactly how do I speak to them? And I, it's definitely not perfected, but I'm I'm getting much better at that thing, at that part of it. Certainly, certainly. You know, and, and this is one of the thing I think um, new brands or brands that maybe um, I wouldn't say rush to market, but just they're really focused on, okay, this is our audience. This is the product we want to bring to market. They know the industry because that's what they're in. But sometimes it's challenging to articulate that and then amplify that to have that message. And I suppose this is where really it comes into uh, creating that brand voice guide and that style guide, not only for you to get clarity because you're verbalizing it, but also anyone, any other stakeholders that you bring into the business like us, they can observe that and they go, okay, this is what the brand is about. This is how it's positioned. This is the voice. This is the tonality and how it is com being communicated to the audience that we're marketing to. Um, but I think you've done it. I think you've done it great. Like, you know, I, I constantly look at the brand when we chat and I think, you know, this is awesome. You know, this is really positioned well, great product. And, um, you know, this is the first product or uh, first product that you've brought to market. And I think in terms of the whole grand scheme, you've got your big toe in there, in the door tight, and you're edging to put the whole foot in there with the leg soon. And, um, you know, which leads me to the next question is from a lead product, which you've got, which is before, where to after that? What's, what's next for combat supplements in terms of next product lines to, to serve that market? Because, you know, you, you have got that market. You've got uh, recognition and credibility there. So, you know, what's the next moves for you? Yeah. So, again, it's kind of thinking back to that avatar of, okay, what these guys that I'm targeting, what do they need? Hmm. And, you know, in jiu-jitsu, frankly, we we beat the hell out of each other. Right. And we're like, there are, you know, if you go on jujitsu pages, there are tons of, there are tons of memes about back pain, you know, constant pain, those kinds of things. And so our bodies always hurt and, and that kind of stuff. So where we're headed next, as I mentioned, is we're going to come up with a recovery product mm. that not only addresses simply, you know, the, the need for putting electrolytes back into your system after your training, because we sweat our asses off, yeah. whether you're doing gi, which is, 
if you, a gi is essentially the karate pajamas, right? Whether you're doing that or you're doing no gi, which is more of like the grappling kinds of things, you're losing all of those minerals from your system. And so it's partly replenishing that, but then it's also dealing with just the pain that goes with what we do. And so the recovery formula is going to address both of those. From there, I'm going to go a little bit deeper onto the pain side and likely look at some more joint health kinds of things. Very nice. Because yep. again, we're, we're attacking joints, right? Where you get somebody in an arm lock or a foot lock, you're trying to break that joint <laughs> and those things hurt. So we want to help guys with that. And then from there, we'll, we'll, you know, kind of go more holistic and take a look at how do you do whole body care? Sure. I don't know necessarily it's going to be a, you know, a greens product or something like that, but we're going to move in that direction. Sure. You know, and, th- and this is something that we quite often preach is that, um, you know, from a, I suppose, from a marketability and a business perspective, any complementary products that you can introduce to your product range that can be bundled together by way of either the benefit that it derives, or if it's complementary in terms of uh, th- the way that the consumer would take it, bring it out, bring it, do it. Because if you can increase that average order value, it means ultimately from a direct response marketing standpoint, you're going to have a lot more breathing room to play and be competitive with marketing your product uh, compared to the the other brands out there that are going to be essentially doing the same thing that you want to be doing. So, um, you know, by bringing those other products that are complementary, it certainly gives you uh, a lot more facts to chew on from a marketing and advertising perspective. Yeah. And, you know, only having one product definitely has been a bit of a challenge as far as kind of bumping up that AOV Mm. because essentially right after the sale, we're then presenting, Hey, do you want more of what you just bought? Mm. Now, again, we, I kind of been messing with some of the language and the good news is, is that works. We have about a 15% uptake on that upsell of you want another one of these essentially. Um, so that's that's really working. But yeah, I think if we can get those complimentary products, it will it will definitely help. But I also I just rolled out one product intentionally, partly because I didn't want to use all my available cash on inventory. Sure. But partly because I really wanted to figure out okay, how can I at least sell one thing online really, really well, or I, I know I can do it consistently, then and we'll start to add additional complexity into the business. Sure. So, and, you know, that's the smartest way. And I think we've had these discussions before. And um, if you can do things without overextending yourself and make those learning mistakes uh, early on in the game, when it comes down to double downing, uh, you know, comes to double downing and uh, introducing more products, spending more money on inventory, having to meet those minimum order quantity requirements uh, and expanding upon that, you know, you've got your checks and balances in place to be able to facilitate that process. And listen, being conscious of time for the guys listening, who anyone that wants to get this product, where can they get it from? Where, where what site? I know the site, but I'll let you say it. <laughs> yeah. Where can they go? Yeah, for sure. Go to combatsups.com. So C O M B A T S U P P S dot com. Uh, on Instagram, that's where we're most active. And uh, same, same Instagram handle. So at combat subs. And then, like you, we have a podcast as well where we definitely we interview some of the kind of biggest names in jujitsu, because I want to learn from those guys. What the hell are they doing? Why are they so great? And that's the Combat Subs podcast. Fantastic. And I don't know if I should be saying this, but I'm going to be doing it anyway. We are leading into a special time of the year. We call it the Super Bowl of e-commerce, which is Black Friday, Cyber Monday around the year. Do you happen to have any sort of promotions or anything like that where people could take advantage of if they were to come over to your site in the next week or two to purchase before? Uh, I do. Absolutely. Not surprisingly. (laughs) So yeah. So uh, during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, so it's going to kick off basically midnight Thursday morning and Thanksgiving morning. It will end uh, Monday at midnight uh, and it's 33% off storewide. So go on there, anything you want, whether it's kind of teas like I'm wearing or you want to get a couple bottles of before, uh, you're going to be 33% off. And if you live in the US, it's free shipping always. Fantastic. Sorry to throw you under, under the bus there, but it uh, had to be done. <laughs> of course. Hey, Eric, thank you very much for coming on Staying On Point. I really appreciate your time. Appreciate having a chat. Appreciate learning your story and then getting to uh, unplug some of the motivation and inspiration between re- releasing the brand and, and your product. And so thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Awesome, mate. Well, we'll speak soon and all the best. Cheers. Sounds good. Bye-bye. 
Thank you for listening to Staying On Point. Tune in with us on our next episode as we dive in, interviewing other fantastic guests, finding out exactly what makes them tick and how they've achieved their success.